When I perform, um, it's always the same feeling. You know, you get the butterflies in the stomach and that just really shows that you care about what you're doing. You want to perform the best. Um, when I perform, I put a very, very high expectation on myself and it really helps me, it drives me. When I was younger, I got into music by listening to many artists who I loved. Like, my mom always played different CDs by like Aretha Franklin and Miles Davis, which is who I was named after, and she loved him, and James Brown, and you know, we heard some things from Destiny's Child and Beyonce around the house. Miles always was a musical kid. He liked dancing, singing, beating drums, anything. And then all of a sudden, when he got to elementary school, he picked up the flute. And then he picked up the flute, and they were like, he's really good. He taught himself how to play. Well, he got teased for playing the flute. <laughs> so he wanted to change, and he's like, I'm going to play that. Well, that happened to be the oboe. I think that it was a pretty sad reason to switch. However, it was an uh, absolute blessing, I believe. At first, what stood out about Miles as a uh, young man, as a seventh grader, was that uh, he was very shy. Uh, we kind of referred to him as a, a wounded bird because he couldn't look up at you. And, but he was so eager and so enthusiastic um, that that's what stood out more than anything else, besides the fact that he was, he was talented. Um, but he had experienced some trouble at schools, bullied a little bit, and so uh, a couple members of my faculty and I recognized this and said we need to kind of do intervene here and see what we can do about uh, helping this kid out by helping him to focus on, on his music and also to help build his confidence. It's truly a blessing. These people didn't know us. <laughs> I didn't come out and say, hey, where do I, you know, the flag, we need help. They just gravitated and saw our story. We're pretty private. You know, we just get by on what we can. And these people believed in the arts, believed in Miles, wanted him to know that everybody in the world isn't, <laughs> you know, mean, and it could be better, and you can do what you love and be happy, and it changed his life. I mean, it really changed his life. I see the oboe for Miles as being his voice. Uh, when he couldn't express himself, uh, he put all of that energy into practicing. Uh, my, my mom actually bought him uh, his first oboe. My school district wasn't supportive and the oboes that they had were not adequate and I would purposely get broken oboes and oboes with all these problems and they were never the best. And so she sent me like seven oboes to me and my oboe teacher at the time. And she said, just pick one. And so when I picked the one that I really wanted, it just felt amazing. Cause it was also like a, like the leash was being cut. I no longer had to go through all of the abuse really. He uh, had, was practicing so much that he fell asleep one night and then fell and actually broke it in half <laughs> because he just spent so much time, it was as if it were his best friend. My mom told me that when I perform, it's always about the passion of playing the oboe, so I try to get really in the mindset of the piece, which means that sometimes when I perform, I may come to the oboe very sad if I'm playing a piece about, you know, they're so crazy with operatic oboe solos. I mean, someone's wife could have died or, you know, and when you really get into that character, the way the audience sees it can be really great if you really dive into it and become passionate about what you're doing. The first time I heard him play really, really with his heart into it was a solo ensemble festival and he got a one on his first solo. And I'm like, wow, that's amazing. And he played this really great piece <laughs> and it was so moving. And then I wouldn't look at him because he was like, don't look at me, you make me nervous. So I sat behind him and they were recording it. And I'm like, that's amazing. Throughout my life, I have had so many ups and downs and it's a story in itself. 
So I can take those emotions that I take from other places. And for instance, if I'm playing a very sad, um, melancholy piece, my mother and I, um, when I was nine years old, we lost our home. And although I was not very sad about the, the incident or the event, I was more sad, shockingly, I guess, of how my mom looked during that moment and when she was crying. And I, I can try to find that same emotion. Whether if the audience feels sad after performance or whether if they're happy or mad, I know that I've done my job because I have connected with them and changed their emotions on something in some kind of way. Miles is more like the lotus, growing out of mud and then blossoming. I know that he's happy. There was a time when I could honestly sit and say that I'm not sure that he was happy. His oboe was like his security blanket. He, it was where he went to, that place he went to when things were bad. And now he loves it. He got a scholarship to Interlochen. Um, he won the Artistic Excellence Scholarship. Got a scholarship to college. <laughs> the Oboe has allowed me to have great friends, great mentors, and it really has allowed a great impact on me and it has totally shaped my, my life, my, what I plan to do. It was really a new route that I had not expected to take, and it has allowed a great, great life for me, and it has really prepared a great life for me. Um, going to Interlochen Arts Academy as being an alumni from that is really amazing. And it has also gotten me into Vanderbilt University, the same school that James Patterson went to is amazing. And being in Nashville, Tennessee, it's, it's all too good to be true, really.